and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the Bubble Critters project. And with this, we are using spheres to help show color and to help show some dimensionality uh, with our critters. Now, a lot of the examples that I have here are fish because fish have scales, so it kind of lends themselves to uh, that project because it works with the scale. So anything that has scales, we know is gonna work out really well. Uh, you can do something that doesn't have scales, but your shapes may have to be a little bit more teardrop shaped or maybe kind of more football shaped. Uh, but again, it still needs to have that round just look to it. So it needs to have a highlight, it needs to have a, a, a middle value and it needs to have a shadow. Now with this particular fish here, uh, they've got it, it looks like it's kind of jumping. So it's got some motion to it. Ideally, there would be some water splashing here, maybe a hook coming out of its mouth to show that it's getting pulled out. Um, but this works out really well. They went from a, a blue with a violet to a green with a yellow to a magenta with a violet and then with some yellow down here. So they did kind of stripes going through it, uh, but the way that the colors work out or are laid out, it works out really well. All right, this next one, uh, the way that they laid out the spheres is a little more haphazard inside of this uh, there is doesn't really look to be a rhyme or reason to it and we're kind of missing an eyeball which i would guess would be this yellow one here so that would need to have a little bit of a black spot to it maybe but we've got a background here and that's really uh, something that we want to have to help tie all this together so it's not just a fish or whatever critter floating there uh, the objects themselves don't necessarily have to be spheres and not all of the the critter needs to be spheres too like this is colored in just a solid color. Uh, this fish here, the inside of the mouth is a solid color just to help differentiate from the rest of the body. And then our last one here is actually uh, two fish. So we've got this little piranha looking guy over here. And then we have a larger one here that has a kind of a pattern on it, uh, but still it, it, each all of this is a sphere. And you can see a little bit of a fin here with a cast shadow. And that cast shadow is a solid thing too. And then you got lots of just bubbles kind of floating around from that. But you can see they got kind of a line in here for the mouth. So you can see where that separation is. And then our last one here is an incomplete one. Uh, it's, you got a little bit of a cartoon twist to it. So I, I call this a Homer Simpson mouth. Uh, so it's kind of, kind of that look there. And we got a bigger sphere here with a black dot uh, for the eye. And then you can see how these are overlapped uh, going through here. And then this is going to kind of fill out. You want to use shapes within your, or the sizes of your spheres within your your shapes to kind of help make it look dimensional. Uh, if you've got something that where it's getting to be a little bit smaller, uh, you want to use spheres that are a little bit smaller. Uh, so we're going to set this aside for the moment and we'll come back to it. To start, you want to draw out your two rectangles uh, so that way you can get some thumbnails laid out or just some rough idea of what you want your critters to look like. Now these can be vertical, they can be horizontal, it does not matter, no, just like with most of the things that we do. Uh, so with this, I'm just gonna kind of real quick kind of sketch something out. So Mio, maybe we're gonna do you know, like a frog. So we have a little bit of a mouth and I, you know, I'm not referencing anything from this, we would, something that we would definitely want to do, um, but you got some legs coming out here like this body leg leg you got a big big jumping frog here now this is something where it's just the frog itself so i would probably say we have you know, like a big lily pad like this so that way he's floating on a lily pad maybe have another lily pad down here so you know it's not just about the animal itself you know maybe you want to have a little something going on with it rib it like this no we're not going to do that uh, and then you know maybe do one one vertical do one horizontal and play with it uh, one of the best things that you can do with this for sure is to reference something and then so look at it and kind of real quick kind of lay in here how you would want your circles to fill in and kind of what it's look like. So we've got like maybe a, a big one here with some little ones kind of show where the feet are. But just to kind of get an idea 
of how that's going to lay out. So there's an I. So make sure you get that dot in there. Maybe, maybe just to see how it looks. And then with the lily pad here, we're going to go with some bigger ones uh, to just help show the difference between the frog and the lily pad itself. Obviously, they would be different colors, um, but you know we want those to really stand out. The colors that we pick don't have to be realistic. Uh, they can be if you want it to. I think that could look work out really nice, uh, especially if you get some of the more exotic fish uh, that have a lot of really bright colors, you know, like a lionfish or um, a clownfish, something like that. So it is possible. So come up with your two ideas, get those laid out, and then we're gonna we are working with a um, pastel paper. So the first thing that we want to do is figure out what colors we're going to work with. And I'm going to keep going with this here, but we're going to flip it over on the back side. Uh, we're going to get a circle. Now, when we draw this out, you can use pencil. You can use a white colored pencil. Um, it doesn't really matter, but we want to kind of get an idea here. And a light source would be a good idea. It doesn't necessarily have to have a light source. Uh, just because sometimes it, that consistency is not going to be there. But we want to choose three or four colors to work with. So I have a white, an indigo blue, an ice blue, and a Copenhagen blue uh, for this. And you just want to kind of play with some colors, see how it's going to work. Like with the fish that I'm working with here, it's primarily going to be all of the same colors. So I want to make sure that it's going to work out nice. So I'm going to layer these in here. Now the paper that you put underneath it is going to change the color a little bit and we want to make sure that we use the side that is smooth uh, so that way we don't have to try and fill in a lot of texture for that. And now I'm trying to get a little bit of a highlight up here. We definitely want to overlap our colors here and we want to make sure that you know, we get a nice solid look. We don't want to go in and just grind the color in there, uh, but we want to make sure that everything's going to work out the way that we want it to. So I'm going to get this color filled in and then come back in here. With pencils, you want to make sure that you are layering the colors so that way it gets them to blend. Uh, if you have a transparent blender, you can use one of those. If you don't, you just want to get your colors layered on top of each other. All right. So this is going to work out. Like that there. Okay. So when you go to start, there isn't really a good place to start. I would say you know, start on one side and kind of work your way across. You don't want to real be real haphazard uh, with how you lay out your spheres. So we're going to take this here and going to come all the way up into this and draw in my sphere here. Now, by doing overlapping like this, it kind of tells you where things are going to go. So you don't want to have stuff overlapping to where the colors are going to be touching and be the same. So I'm going to come in here with this light blue, get this laid in here. And ultimately, you know, we want to make this look round. So come back in with this, get this color laid in. And then my dark color is going to be down here towards the bottom. This is a very time consuming project. It's really easy to get frustrated with it and just kind of go off the walls and buzz through things, get it done quick. It's not gonna look good if you do that. It is best to take your time, work through the layers, make it look nice. Yeah, because if you try, if you rush through this, you know, it's not gonna look right. And you know, once you kind of get going with it, you'll get into a rhythm. Uh, just as far as moving the pencils around in your hand, working like this. And we're just going to work, fill your way through. 
Uh, I've got a fin down here and I've got a fin somewhere here on the side that I need to lay in. So I want to make sure that I go around that uh, when it comes to it. So we're just going to keep chug chugging along and get all of our shapes filled in. And then this will go through if you've got any little spots like this where you've got kind of a, a, a piece of paper showing through. Just come back, hit it with a pencil, get all of those areas filled in. The It's okay to have blank space in the background. We do want to have some other objects, um, but like, like I said, this itself, the animal, the critter that you're doing needs to be solid. So we need to make sure that all of this stuff gets covered up. All right. So once you've got everything figured out, we can start to lay things down and hopefully you get something that turns out really nice. So good luck.